Domain of the function, part one. In this video, I'm going to discuss the domain of the function. Domain of the function is the set of real numbers for which the corresponding expression is defined as a real number. Or, using different words, we may say domain of the function is the set of allowable inputs, x values, such that the y, f of x, makes sense has a meaning, basically. And what we have, there is an only two rules that you ever need to be worried about. First of all, if we see a function, a rational function, which is represented by a fraction, we have to focus on the denominator. Since the fraction bar represents the division, we can't divide by zero. Then, denominator, shouldn't be zero. And I can put, instead of my denominator, of course, I can put my expression, solve the equation, and then eliminate that value, leave out that value out of the domain. That means this is the first one. The second type of function is a radical function. If we see a root function, and especially an even root, that means this is the square root. We may have the fourth root, the sixth root, the eighth root, and so on, an even root. Then the expression under the even root, which we actually call the expression underneath the radical sign, we call radicant. Then radicant of the even root must be always positive or equal to zero greater than zero. Greater than or equal to zero. That means these two expressions, these two mm, mathematical expressions, we have to perform in order to get the domain. And let's practice. Example number one. Find the domain of the following function. State your final answer in the interval notation n function is rational function f of x equals to x minus 1 all over x plus 3. We see the denominator and of course the numerator. We, we have no problem with the numerator. We may have a negative number, so we may have a zero. That's not a problem. We really have to look at the denominator. That means this is the case that denominator cannot be zero. My expression from the denominator is x plus three, cannot be zero. And I can solve this equation. I can subtract three from both sides and I have my answer. The number that I will leave outside the domain is negative three. I can draw a number line to indicate this. This number, number line represents set of all of the x, and negative three is outside of this. I can accept any number, but not negative three. I can indicate as an open dot, and domain will be all of the numbers on this side, on the right-hand side, and of course, all of the numbers on the left-hand side. And using an interval notation, I can say that I can accept numbers from negative infinity to negative three, from negative infinity to negative three, and open parenthesis indicates that I am not including that endpoint. And then union, again open parenthesis, from negative three again to positive infinity. Never close the infinity with the brackets, always open parenthesis. That means this is my interval notation, which represents the domain of the function. I can add one more thing from the set. Uh, sets uh, x belongs to. That means this is the little symbol that represents. We can x. Belongs to that interval, or we may also say 
x is a member of that interval or x is an element. of that interval. But x belongs to is the good, is the most common uh, explanation. Okay, that's me. Let's box the final answer. That's the final answer. Okay, example number two. Find the domain of the following function. State your final answer in the interval notation. Function is defined as a root function, square root of 4x minus 2. And we just learned that the expression underneath the radical sign is called a radicand. A radicand must be greater than or equal to 0. Our radicand is 4x minus 2. Okay. And we end up having a linear inequality. Let's solve it. Let's add 2 to both sides and let's divide by 4. 2 over 4, of course, is 1 half. Dividing by positive number, we're not changing the direction of inequality. Okay, domain looks like is set of all of the numbers greater than or equal to one half. Let's use the number line, x, one half, and I can accept all of the numbers, even including one half, greater than one half. That's the domain. Let's state using the interval notation. Interval will be from one half to infinity close infinity and indicating that we including one half we will use the square bracket and of course x belongs to x belongs to the an interval from one half to infinity including one half that's the final answer example number three find the domain of the following function state your final answer in the interval notation. f of x is equal to x plus 5 all over the square root of the quantity 6 minus x. That means again, I have my quantity on the top, x plus 5, I have no problem, I can accept any numbers, positive, negative, zero, that means any real number is good to put on the top. However, I do have denominator, and in the denominator, I have the square root. That means I have to combine these two conditions. Denominator cannot be zero, and the square root must, the expression under the square root must be positive. And in this case, I can't accept zero. denominator never zero and radicand greater than or equal to zero. However, in this case, we do have a radicand, radical expression in the denominator. That means I will not accept zero. Okay, that means the whole denominator cannot be zero, okay? And of course, this is telling me I can solve this. Uh, I can square both sides. I can subtract six from both sides, and I can see that six, that x cannot be six. Dividing by negative number, I am losing negative on both sides. X cannot be six. But of course, I also have my radicand, which this will be the expression under must be greater than or equal to zero. But we can see right away that we will not be able to accept six. That means I can 
I can solve this way. Okay? That means now we have to be really careful. We have a linear inequality with the leading coefficient negative. Okay, let's solve this inequality. Negative x, it's greater than or equal to subtracting six, I have negative six. And now I will be dividing both sides by negative number. Negative x divided by negative one is x. Negative six divided by negative one is six. However, dividing by negative, I have to change the direction of inequality. That means I've got an all of the numbers less than or equal to six. But including this condition, I can't accept six. That means the final answer will be x just less than six. Okay, all of the numbers less than or equal to six or not six, I can't just simply accept six. Okay, all of the numbers again less than six. Number line six. All of the numbers less than six are the numbers on the left hand side and not including six. That means my interval notation will be from negative infinity to six. And six, I am not including six, then I'm leaving an open open parenthesis parenthesis x belongs to that's the final answer that's the domain of the function okay all of the numbers from negative infinity to six okay. example number four find the domain of the following function state your final answer in the interval notation okay now, what I see, I see my denominator, which again, denominator cannot be zero, and I see the radicand. Radicand must be greater than or equal to zero. I have no problem with equal to zero since the radicand is in the numerator. That means the same thing. Denominator. radicand greater than or equal to zero. x minus five cannot be zero. I can just add five. That means x is not equal to five. Five will be left outside the domain. A radicand is just three x minus 12 must be greater than or equal to zero. Let's add 12 to both sides and let's divide by three. 3 is a positive number, then I'm not changing direction of the inequality. 12 by 3, 4. Okay. But now I have to be really careful because I have to combine these two conditions. I can accept all of the numbers greater than or equal to 4, but on the way I have to exclude 5. That means combining these two, I can draw my number line. Four. And actually, I have to indicate five. That means what I will do. All of the numbers equals to four and greater than four means this direction. But on the way, I have to exclude five. And this means that I've got two intervals from four to five and from five to infinity. from four to five, including four, not including five, union, and start again from five to infinity. X belongs to, as we can see, we can accept all of the numbers between four and five, and from five to infinity. Four is fine, but not five, because five will give me zero in the denominator, and I'm not happy with the base with the zero in the denominator. So we can't divide by zero. And I have one more example, example number five. Find the domain of the following function. State your final answer in the interval notation. f of x is defined as a ratio of two root functions. 
On the top, we have square root of the quantity 4 minus x. In the denominator, I have square root of x plus 7. Okay. What I have? Taking care of denominator, I see my radicand. That means I can maybe, I can say that the radicand from the denominator denominator and radicand, okay? everything must be just greater than zero. Okay? That means I'm not accepting zero. This means that the denominator is not zero, which means x plus seven must be greater than zero only. Okay? And then on the top, I have only radicand. Radicand, and this one must be still positive, but I can accept zero greater than or equal to zero, which is four minus x must be greater than or equal to zero. That we can see in the denominator, we have combination of both denominator and radicand. Radicand must be always positive and equal to zero, but since denominator cannot be zero. I just rem I remove I simply remove that equal to. Okay? Solving these two inequalities and combining the answers, I will get the domain of this function. Subtracting seven, I can accept all of the numbers greater than negative seven and subtracting negative four and dividing by negative one. Negative x divided by negative one is simply x. Negative four divided by negative one is four. But dividing by negative number and inequality, I have to change the direction. That means now x is less than or equal to four. Okay? Let's take this inequality and this one and put on the number line. I have negative seven and four. And let's see what we have. I can accept all of the numbers greater than negative seven, not including negative seven. That means that's all of the numbers. And then at the same time, the numbers must, the, all of the numbers must be less than four, four. including four and less than four. That's all of the numbers. And we can see both of the sets overlapped between negative 7 and 4. That means domain of this function is an interval from negative 7 to 4, including 4, a bracket, not including negative 7. X belongs to. And that's the domain of the function. Thank you.